In this lesson, we're going to look at solutions and solubility curves. You should already have an understanding of what a solution is and how a solute and solvent work together to form a solution. You know that not all solutes dissolve equally in solvents. Now there are three types of solutions. A saturated solution is one where the maximum amount of solute is dissolved in a given amount of solvent. That means no more solute can dissolve in that solvent. An unsaturated solution is when you have less than the maximum amount. There is a definite limit. And finally, a supersaturated solution is when you have more than the maximum amount. Now the graph here on the right shows us solubility curves for different substances. Each one of these graphs shows you the amount of solute that could dissolve in 100 grams of water to make a saturated solution. You see that for different temperatures, different substances will dissolve in different amounts in that water. So how much solute can dissolve? Well, when you look at those curves, I want you to notice that it does depend on temperature. The water can dissolve the solute as long as there are water molecules available to surround it, like we looked at earlier. And those limits, remember, on that graph show you the saturation amounts. If you increase the temperature of a solvent, think about what it does to the particles. You know that particles have kinetic energy, so a higher temperature means more kinetic energy. The particles are going to move faster. That means that the water molecules can surround the solute molecules even faster than they would at a lower temperature. So can you think of other ways besides raising the temperature that you could help the solute and the solvent come into contact with each other? We'll work on that answer during our lab. Here are some examples of those graphs. Generally, when a solid gets dissolved in a liquid, the higher the temperature means that more solid can dissolve. But take a look on the right side. For gases, it's the opposite. The higher the temperature, the lower the solubility. Think about a can of soda, for example. If you leave a can of soda in your car during the summer when the temperature gets really hot, the can can explode because the gas that's in that soda will come out of solution. So for gases, the solubility and the temperature are inversely related. For solids, the temperature and the solubility are directly related. Now let's look at that graph again. Remember that on the line are the saturated solutions. Anywhere below the line is unsaturated and anywhere above the line is saturated. Now on the graph, there are two different types of lines. The dashed lines here represent gases, so you can see how they have a negative slope. And the solid lines are solids dissolved in liquids, so they have a positive slope. That just supports what we just discussed in terms of the direct relationship for solids and temperature dissolving versus the inverse relationship for a gas. Let's do some example problems. In this first question, what term describes 39 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in water at 70 degrees? So what you're going to need to do is find 70 degrees on the x-axis of the graph and read up to the blue sodium chloride line. Now when we get to that point, it seems to be about 30 grams on the y-axis as my solubility reading. But th in this problem, I'm dissolving 39 grams. That's more than what that graph predicts. So for that reason, this is going to be a supersaturated solution. The amount I'm using is more than what's predicted on this graph. Let's look at the second one. What about 30 grams of sodium chloride at that same temperature? Well, again, find 70 degrees on the x-axis and when you get to the blue sodium chloride line, it is at about 30 grams. So if 30 grams is the maximum amount that can dissolve, that's going to represent a saturated solution. And then finally, at 70 degrees, what if we only have 21 grams of sodium chloride? Well, you know the maximum amount is 30 grams. So if we're below that, only at 21 grams, that's less than the maximum that can dissolve that's going to represent an unsaturated solution. 
So that's how you read these solubility curves and a little bit about the classifications of solutions and why the amounts do depend on temperature. Have a good afternoon.